Since the James Webb Space Telescope launched, scientists have been running wild trying to capture images of everything they can within the universe. From the internet-breaking image of the deep field to the almost terrifying image of the pillars of creation, it has surpassed our exceptions in every sense of the world. So, it only makes sense that they're looking for more. In fact, they're looking to photograph exoplanets to learn more about what they are and whether life may exist on them. Join us as we learn more about attaining a clear image of one such Earth-like planet, Proxima b. So, let's get right to it. Have you ever wondered if there's life beyond our solar system? Well, scientists have recently discovered a planet that could potentially support life, and it's closer than you might think. Proxima b is a planet orbiting a star called Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to our Sun. This planet is similar in size to Earth and orbits within what is known as the habitable zone, where conditions could be just right to support liquid water and perhaps life as we know it. What makes Proxima b so exciting is its proximity to our planet. It's only four light years away. That might sound like a lot, but in space terms, it's like having your next door neighbor host a party and invite you over. We're practically neighbors. The star that Proxima b orbits, Proxima Centauri, is a red dwarf that's smaller and cooler than our Sun. And while Proxima b is closer to its star than Mercury is to the Sun, its host star's cooler temperature means that it still falls within the habitable zone. Scientists believe that only one side of Proxima b faces its star, just like only one side of our moon faces Earth. But that doesn't mean the other side is completely uninhabitable. Who knows what could be hiding on the other side of this mysterious exoplanet? Overall, Proxima b is an incredible discovery that brings us one step closer to unraveling the mysteries of the universe. The fact that it's so close to us makes it that much more intriguing. Who knows what else is waiting to be discovered? When it comes to finding planets with the potential for life, scientists need to consider a whole bunch of factors. Remember, just because a planet is in a star's habitable zone doesn't necessarily mean it can actually support life. It simply means the planet has temperatures that could sustain liquid water, a key ingredient for life as we know it. But that's not all. For a planet to be considered truly habitable, its host star needs to burn for long enough to allow life to evolve, and it must emit appropriate amounts of ultraviolet radiation. And the planet itself must have significant similarities to Earth. That's where Proxima b comes in. Not only is it the closest of the 44 potential habitable exoplanets we've discovered so far, but it also has the highest Earth similarity index. ESI is simply a way to measure how similar a planet is to our home. The closer the ESI is to 1.0, the more similar the planet is to Earth when it comes to its size, density and surface temperature. And now, thanks to the James Webb Telescope, we may be close to finally attaining the clearest image of Proxima b ever. It's very difficult at this time to see much detail, since the planet is very close to its star and basically hidden from view, but who knows what we might discover in the future. For now, let's just keep in awe of this fascinating exoplanet and all that it represents. Now, we've never actually seen Proxima b up close because it's about 4.2 light years away from us, but scientists have been able to observe changes in Proxima Centauri's color, which has led them to believe that Proxima b is there right where it should be. Proxima b is a pretty interesting planet because it's tidally locked to its star. That means one side of the planet always faces the star and the other side is always in darkness. Even though it's really close to its star, it's not as hot as you might expect, because Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star which is cooler than our Sun. Did you know that the way land is distributed on an exoplanet 
could have a big impact on its climate and potential habitability. That's what a group led by climate scientist Adiv Paradise MacDonald has found. See, when a planet is tidally locked to its star, one side is always facing the star and experiencing intense heat, while the other side is perpetually in darkness and freezing cold. Not exactly the most hospitable conditions for life as we know it. But there's hope. McDonald's team wanted to see if the amount and distribution of land on the day side of a planet could make it more habitable. They ran simulations comparing a planet with a circular continent in the middle of a liquid ocean to one with a circle of land surrounded by ice. And what did they find? Well, more land on the day side meant less rain, higher temperatures and a bigger difference in temperature between the day side and night side. But if there was more ocean, there would be more rain and clouds. And get this, even if the total amount of land stayed the same, the way it was distributed could cause the average surface temperature of the planet to vary by as much as 20 degrees Celsius. That's a pretty substantial difference. What does this all mean? Let me break it down for you. The discovery of each exoplanet has taught us that these celestial bodies are much more diverse than we previously assumed. Thanks to this realization, we also have some insight into how scientists can improve our search for other habitable planets outside our solar system. But coming back to Proxima b, there is a good enough chance that it could support life, mainly because scientists believe it may have water and an atmosphere to shield it from extreme heat. But we can't be sure yet, not unless we get some concrete evidence. That's where NASA's James Webb Space Telescope comes into play. This telescope specializes in observing infrared light, which is super important when it comes to studying planets like Proxima b. How does this work, you ask? If Proxima b has an atmosphere, it would absorb light from its star and release it as infrared light instead. And the JWST is just what we need to detect it. By taking photos of infrared light on Proxima b, scientists can search for patterns that would indicate whether or not the planet has water or is covered by an atmosphere. So even though we don't have concrete evidence that Proxima b is an Earth twin, we're inching closer to finding out thanks to some incredible technology. As is usually the case with space exploration, things aren't so simple. The proposed method may be the best option out there, but there are other factors that need to be considered. For instance, even the existence of an atmosphere is not sufficient to guarantee that life may exist, says astrophysicist Ed Turner of Princeton University. It is also possible that Proxima b may resemble Venus, with an atmosphere that is 90 times thicker than Earth and extreme heat. Still, Loeb and Kreidberg's plan is the only viable option to help us learn more about the Earth next door. The reason we're so sure is that the JWST has managed to photograph another exoplanet. Get this, the James Webb Space Telescope, also known as the JWST, has just captured its first images of a planet orbiting a distant star. The planet, HIP 65426b, might not sound like a superstar, but it's actually a gas giant that's several times more massive than Jupiter and only 15 million years old. That's like a newborn baby in astronomical terms. But wait, it gets better. The planet is roughly 350 light years from Earth. Talk about long distance relationships. Now, I know you might not be too impressed by how detailed these new planetary images are, but the researchers who were able to take the images certainly were. When the results came back, Sasha Hinckley, an astrophysics professor at the University of Exeter in England, who helped lead the study, said, I had to make sure that I wasn't looking at a simulated image. It looked like the model images from when we wrote our proposal five years ago. But let us tell you, the images JWST's images of HIP 65426b revealed that it is outperforming expectations for its exoplanet studies. And this is good news because this also means that JWST's planned endeavors to observe other exoplanets will probably be even more successful than researchers had hoped.
And that's great news because astronomers can now get even more ambitious when they submit proposals to JWST's governing board in the upcoming research cycles. The possibilities are endless. So let's give a round of applause to the amazing team behind JWST, who have managed to achieve the seemingly impossible feat of taking direct photographs of exoplanets. As Sasha Hinckley puts it, I was really intrigued by the technical challenges of this research of having to block out these super bright host stars, which are 10,000 or a million times brighter than the faint planets orbiting them. It almost sounds impossible, like trying to spot a tiny glowing firefly fluttering under a bright stadium light from your seat across the field. But with the right technique, exoplanets can be revealed, and we're only just scratching the surface. Exciting times are ahead in the field of exoplanet research. The James Webb Space Telescope JWST, just took some direct images of a giant gas planet called HIP 65426b. It's a real baby, only 15 million years old, and it's hanging out about 350 light years from Earth. Now, you might think, big deal, we've seen plenty of pictures of planets before. But hold on, this is different. The researchers are super excited about these images because they show that JWST is way better than studying exoplanets than they originally thought. JWST is one heck of a telescope and it's already proving to be the best at capturing images of exoplanets. So how did they do it? Well, they use a pretty cool technique. They observe a nearby star that had similar properties to the target star and built a template of what the starlight looked like. Then they subtracted that from the real image to reveal just the planet. Sounds easy, right? But there were a lot of things that had to go right for this to work, and they did. JWST's imaging sensitivity turned out to be even better than expected, and its advanced coronagraph did a great job of blocking out the host star's light. Plus, JWST was super stable when taking its observations, which is crucial for getting a clean starlight template. All of this is thanks to the hard work of thousands of scientists and engineers over the last 20 years across the entire globe. And now, because of JWST's sensitivity and stability, scientists can directly observe much smaller exoplanets than ever before, even smaller than they had hoped. It's an exciting time for space exploration, and we can't wait to see what else JWST has in store for us. So, a group of astronomers has been able to directly image an exoplanet with the help of the James Webb Space Telescope. The telescope's advanced coronagraph was able to block out most of the host star's light, making it easier to observe the planet. They subtracted the star's light to reveal only the planet's light. JWST's stability while taking the observations was also crucial in obtaining a clean starlight template. This is great news for future studies, including one that will be led by Charles Beckman between July and August 2023, where they will use direct imaging to search for planets within our nearest star system, Alpha Centauri. Until now, astronomers have only been able to photograph exoplanets that are much, much larger than Jupiter and are orbiting very far from their stars. But the latest imaging results indicate that JWST is capable of detecting planets at the size of our own Saturn or Neptune for the closest stars. Sebastian Marino and his colleagues plan to observe stars surrounded by wide debris disks that resemble gargantuan versions of Saturn's rings between next April and June. Marino's team will focus on disks with noticeable gaps, hypothesizing that as yet undetected planets are responsible for carving these observed gaps as they orbit their host stars. JWST's better-than-expected performance makes Marino confident that the telescope can detect planets at the sizes they are hoping to find. Elizabeth Matthews is a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Geneva, and JWST's latest imaging results have validated the program's design. Even if JWST doesn't find the exoplanets they are looking for, researchers are glad that the telescope will at least be able to confirm if the planets don't exist an important but often overlooked aspect of planet hunting. 
a weaker telescope would be far more likely to produce inconclusive results and force us to spend time on what could be an ultimately fruitless search. In the months of April and May 2023, Matthews will use JWST to conduct observations of a nearby star called Epsilon Indy A, which is located only 12 light years away. Epsilon Indy AB, an exoplanet orbiting that star, was discovered because of the slight gravitational wobble that its massive mass caused the star to experience. Although no one has ever actually set foot on this planet, astronomers' best guesses indicate that it must be relatively frigid, which further indicates that it is relatively old too. It's generally believed that giant exoplanets are warm when they first form, emitting vast quantities of heat energy as a byproduct of their recent formation. The glowing planetary blob seen in JWST's infrared images of HIP 65426b is nothing more than the result of thermal energy emitted by the planet itself, and not light that is reflecting off the tops of the planet's clouds. Planets that are older and more frigid have in general been too dim to photograph because the bright light of their host stars has drowned them out. So Matthew's plan to image a more mature planet presents a challenge. However, the recent performance of JWST suggests that accomplishing this goal should not be out of the question. Matthews claims that she planned her investigation so that it would only require the bare minimum amount of time that would be required to generate an image of a planet. However, she is now even more confident that it will be successful in the allotted amount of time because JWST's greater-than-expected sensitivity is the equivalent of being given more observing time. Despite the fact that it is too late to easily change plans for JWST's inaugural Cycle 1 observations to capitalize on its greater-than-anticipated high-contrast imaging performance, these early results will certainly make astronomers more confident when planning future research. Both Marino and Matthews are of the opinion that they should strive for more audacious research goals the next time around. Late in the month of January, you will be required to submit research proposals for JWST's second cycle of observations. Before that time, Sasha Hinckley intends to reach out to the astronomical community in order to provide guidance on how to make the most of the capabilities of the JWST based on the most recent understanding that his team has gained of those possibilities. She expects that their recommendations will enable the community to put forward the strongest possible set of proposals to make these observations. In subsequent research cycles, targets that were previously deemed impossible to observe because they were either too small or too far away could possibly be considered within reach. And in the end, the superlative exoplanet imaging work that JWST did should help guide efforts to develop even more ambitious observatories that can photograph targets that are much smaller and fainter, potentially habitable, more Earth-like worlds. Not to mention these observatories will be able to photograph gas giants as well as other targets. As Bachmann put it, things that were once thought of as a possibility in the distant future have moved into another realm. Now scientists are thinking in terms of, yeah, we'll be able to do that soon. That's all for today. Let us know what you think about JWST's potential in the comments. Until next time.